So I got a little nostalgic and decided I want to take a walk through memory lane and remember some of the craziest updates in Minecraft. And let me tell you, there is some stuff here that I just didn't remember at all. There has been so many different Minecraft updates, but today I'm going to show you guys 34 updates that changed Minecraft forever. Number one, name changing. Imagine creating a name with a name that you thought was really funny and creative, but after you started playing with your friends and sharing your Minecraft videos with other people, you realize your name sounds kind of lame and even kind of dumb. Well, I don't really want to talk about it, but I am really happy the times when we couldn't change our names in Minecraft are long gone. Since they introduced the account name changing since version 1.7.6, you are now able to change your Minecraft name. Number two, skin updates. Another game changing update for version 1.7.6 is a series of improvements made to the skin system that allows us to, well, improve the way our players look by making it a lot easier to change the skin. I'm sure you guys love to customize your look and make some awesome, awesome skins and that wouldn't be available without this update. Long gone are the days where we wouldn't be able to customize our appearance like we do today. Update number three or just number three. I have to group a lot of small updates here as a game-changing update because that time they added so much stuff that it would be unfair to accept that they changed the game forever with what is known today as the Bountiful update. Back in version 1.8, the Bountiful update has changed so much. I mean, like it has added so many different things to the game, such as granite, andesite, polished versions of it, red sandstone, slime blocks, wet spots, sponges, coarse dirt, prismarine, dark prismarine, 16 colored banners, customizable banners. I mean, this update added so many things to the game. It made Minecraft a decorative piece. What else did they add, may you ask? Well, they added the fences and the cool door variants that allowed us to see through the doors and the windows. They also added the armor stands, the iron trap doors. Am I forgetting something important here? Oh, if you're a structure kind of dude, maybe you like the ocean monuments those were also added then the new depth strider enchantment that goes on the boots that makes you basically move fast in water finally i mean this update added so much it changed the game as a whole Number four, this update was huge because you couldn't get the creeper head, the zombie head, or the skeleton skulls in survival before the 1.8 version. You could only pull them out of creative mode. There were also some other important updates performed on the mobs AI, meaning that they made them a little less dumb and a little bit smarter. You know how the skeletons shoot faster? Yeah, that's when they added this in. Number five, in 1.8, they also changed a lot of the way enchantments were done, basically changing the amount of experience needed to perform them. Before this update you needed like a lot of levels if you wanted to enchant something like if you wanted protection 3 you probably needed 30 levels of experience but with this update they made it a lot easier and now you just need some lapis and a lot less levels so you don't go completely broke of xp number six we cannot talk about game changing updates without mentioning the changes made to the old combat system in 1.9 what is known today as the combat update, AKA the most diverse update ever made to Minecraft. This was an update that a lot of people hated and a lot of people liked. In the old Minecraft days, you could just spam click your sword. The faster you can click your sword, the more damage you can do. But now to do a lot of damage, you have to wait for your sword to cool down between each hit. I personally don't like this update. I miss the days where I could just spam my sword at a thousand miles per hour and do so much damage. But hey, I guess not every change is always for the better. Number seven. There were some nice updates here in the end after you got to kill the Ender Dragon. You had two options. Number one, respawn the Ender Dragon and fight him again. Or number two, go through this little portal and explore the rest of the end, which is kind of boring unless you find an end city. Then it gets really, really fun. It's like finding a nether fortress in the nether. I mean, it's just crazy. And if you were really lucky, you might even be able to find an end ship. The end cities themselves are always worth your time because they can have some really awesome items waiting for loot, but the end ships was where things got a lot better. In there, you could find Electro Wings. I remember when they released Electro Wings and everyone was freaking out and making these crazy maps flying in Minecraft because now you could fly in survival mode. That sure was one amazing update. Number eight, 
I don't know if magma blocks can be described as a big game changer, but they sure are pretty cool. They were introduced in version 1.10. This is when they added some things like the nether wart blocks, the red nether bricks, the bone blocks, and three new minor mobs like the polar bear, the husk, and the stray. But my favorite thing here are the magma blocks. Why? Well, dude, it's a magma block. It's a lava block. Like what? They look so cool and you can definitely use them for defense as well. They're just really fun to mess with. I mean, it's another new form of lava that they added into the game that's a little less harmful. Just put some carpet over them and let the fun begin. Number nine. The Woodland Mansion is, well, <laughs> it's a big, big mansion, and it contains some decent loot. This place itself is not too impressive, although it's kind of nice if you go there for a little haunted house vibe. You could also run into some creepy mob like the Vindicators and the Evokers, but the game-changing feature is not the house itself, but something guarded by one of its dwellers. Number 10. The Woodland Mansion usually contains a lot of treasure worth the risk of fighting its many evil mobs inside. But the worst of its dwellers is the feared evoker himself. You need to go all in with this dude. I mean, he like shoots up claws out of the ground. He has crazy attacks. But if you beat him, he'll drop the treasure he hides within his robes a magic artifact called the Totem of Undying. And it's a magic relic where if you equip it when you die, you will actually get brought back from death. This really useful bad boy was added back in version 1.11. Number 11. When Minecraft released the 1.12 update, also known as the World of Color update, they visually changed the game forever. A lot of new stuff got introduced, like colored concrete blocks, colored concrete powder, colored glazed terracotta blocks and lots of awesome colorful beds. They also added parrots too. And now in Minecraft, we have more color than ever. Number 12. Also added in the 1.12 update, the knowledge book is a item exclusive to the Java edition and it can only be obtained by the give command. This item reveals recipes to the player who used it by adding it to their recipe book. Super, super useful stuff. Number 13. I'm gonna include the 1.13 update here because this version introduced major changes to Minecraft focused on the ocean content. So it changed forever. For starters, it added a lot of buttons, pressure plates, trapdoor variants, but most importantly, it added brand new water mechanics by including things like water logging mechanisms, the trident, corals, coral biomes, exploration maps, buckets of fish, new blocks such as blue ice, coral, kelp, sea pickles, strip logs, wood, turtle eggs, so many things. They even made water more transparent and changed its color to make it look better in specific biomes. Oh, and I can't forget the new mobs like the turtles and the dolphins and the drowned zombies. Number 14. A wild and major update called the Pillagers and Villagers update was released under the 1.14 mark, adding lots and lots of changes. All the villages were changed by making them look like the biomes that surround them, which is super cool. These villages went from boring to cool, my dude. Number 15. Not only were villages revamped, but also all villagers suffered a massive set of changes. They were given new outfits, workstations, brand new trading UIs, a leveling system, and a wide array of professions. This is one of my favorites. He wears green. How cool is that? Back in the old days, all the villagers looked exactly the same. Number 16. Villages were very quiet and peaceful places, except at night, cause you know, zombies. Well, that all changed with version 1.14 and the addition of pillagers. A group of angry looking dudes whose sole purpose in life is to destroy villages and raid them. These people are mean with crossbows and they are ready to raid any village in their way. But just because they live for destruction of people's houses doesn't mean they don't have a house themselves. This update also added pillager outposts so you can go raid them as well. Number 17. Not only they added these invaders to the game, but they also add what we know now is illagers, a type of hostile mob that looks like villagers, wandering traders, zombie villagers and witches, but they're not. Illagers are just angry and all they want to do is attack players, other villagers, wandering traders, snow golems, and iron golems. So it's like their villagers just gone bad. Number 18. 
Back at the early stages of Minecraft development, a version released to the public called Minecraft version Env Death. And this added a huge and fantastic change that would revolutionize the game forever. We called this Infinite Terrain. Maybe you guys are too young to know, but back in the days, Infinite Terrain was not a thing. You could make it to the end of the Minecraft world and there was nothing else after that. But now Minecraft worlds go forever. You can walk forever. You will never reach the end of a Minecraft world. Number 19, another update from Memory Lane back in the times of Beta 1.7. And before we didn't have the infamous hunger system that currently rules our health regeneration and our ability to sprint, dig, and attack. After the release of beta 1.8, you could no longer recharge your health by eating food. Some of us like that a lot, but some people like it more as it is today. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever played with this feature and what is your favorite system. Number 20, before having the Ender Dragon, you played Minecraft just for the sake of playing or building things, just like we keep doing. But what I mean is that with the addition of the Ender Dragon in the official Minecraft 1.0 release now players had an objective a goal a journey they wanted to go to defeat the final boss of the game in the end this was a really really epic moment and it changed the way that people saw the game it gave us a lot of gameplay time and it gave us something to look forward to at the end that we can soon battle <laughs> look at this noob here if you don't believe me <laughs> 21. Could you imagine Minecraft without having the chance of applying cool enchantments to your favorite items? Sounds a little crazy, huh? Well, this was a drastic addition to the game, my dudes. Before Minecraft 1.0, we didn't have any enchantments. And I know a lot of people still use enchantments today. I mean, even me. Together with the enchantments, they also added an experience and leveling system, which was kind of a huge moment. Number 22. Lots of people thought they were until the hardcore game mode was added back in Minecraft 1.0. It basically locked the overall game difficulty on hard and you only had one life. So if you died at all, you wouldn't be able to respawn. You actually had to delete your world. So yeah, a true hardcore feature for the true hardcore players. Number 23, a truly epic update was the addition of a completely new realm back in Minecraft Alpha 1.2, the Halloween update. One of the most anticipated updates in the game's history. Why is this, you ask? Because this is when they added the nether. So this was big. I mean, imagine how exciting this was. A whole new dimension, a whole new world in the game. Fighting new supernatural mobs like zombie pigmen and among all the other evil mobs. I mean, we take this for granted now, but back then, this was huge. Number 24. But Minecraft Alpha 1.2 Halloween update wasn't the only thing about the nether. They also made a huge change that would forever change the terrain generation for good. I'm talking about biomes. After they added the concept of biomes, terrain generation got a lot smoother and Minecraft world started to look a lot nicer and different. Don't you guys love when they add new biomes these days? Because I sure do. There's so many of them today. Number 25. Are you a fan of Enderman? Do you find them a little bit scary like a slenderman i personally don't find them really scary but they were kind of a big deal when they were added in minecraft back in beta 1.8 they were highly anticipated and got somewhat of a fan base so you could say that they were really game changing even though they're not really too important today other than getting ender pearls out of them Number 26. Before the huge change made in the combat update, there were major improvements to the combat mechanics that changed the game for the better. Like the addition to sprint or the ability for people to draw back their bows. This change completely affected the way you killed mobs and the way you went throughout the game. Number 27. A lot of other cool stuff were added in beta 1.8 that made the world generation way more interesting. They added NPC villages, they added a stronghold, they added abandoned mine shafts. In general, they just added a lot of cool structures that made the world's exploration a lot more interesting. Number 28. Coming in three main categories, blackstone, polished blackstone, and blackstone brick, 
fix, Blackstone is one of the biggest things to happen to building in years. To this new material, we can add more new stuff recently included in the 1.16 update, such as Nether Gold Ore, and a brand new super rare ore called Ancient Debris, which once you have melted in a furnace will become Netherite Scrap. And with four of these plus four gold ingots, you will obtain a single Netherite ingot, which is a really big deal, my dudes. Are you following me here? Hit the rewind button if you got lost a little bit, but keep this in mind that netherite is even stronger than diamonds. If you happen to be so lucky and wealthy to create nine netherite ingots, you can create one netherite block, which you can use for a build in a beacon. But maybe the smarter choice for this super rare material would be to take your netherite ingots over to a smithing table with your diamond armor and upgrade it to a new armor called netherite armor, which is newer, hotter, and the most awesome armor in existence of the new Minecraft update. Number 29. If you're not an armor kind of guy and you just love of your skin or whatever, netherite is also a big thing for tools. And this is because diamond and diamond tools are no longer the best tools in the game since the 1.16 update. Now call that a game changer, my dudes. Diamonds have been the best tools for years. Now netherite is the top material, and if you want the best tools, you're gonna have to upgrade all your diamond stuff with netherite. So don't stay there looking surprised. Go get a lot of netherite. Number 30. Oh, we always wanted chains in Minecraft, and we finally got them. I can only start to think of all the amazing things that everyone will start building using these chains in their creations. Now this is game changing, come on guys. Don't leave me alone on this one. Comment below and tell me if you think chains are gonna be huge in Minecraft. Number 31. Just like when they first added biomes to the overworld that forever changed the way worlds were generated, now was the time to make an extreme makeover to the nether and add some nice biomes to it. Since the introduction of the 1.16 update, we can now find some nice looking biomes with all types of new plants and resources in the nether. They added five completely new biomes, one of them called the Warp Forest, the Crimson Forest, the Basalt Deltas, the Soul Sand Valley, and last but not least, the Nether Waste Biome. I'm sure this totally qualifies as a game-changing update since the last time they introduced the Nether was in the 1.2 update, and it hasn't really changed ever since. Number 32. In the frame of the Nether overhauling, we have a big, big new structure added. The Bastan Remnant. These are gigantic fortresses where the piglins are spawned, and this is just crazy. They really changed the nether because they have lots and lots of loot. So this is definitely a must when you visit the new version of the nether. Go check it out. You're going to get so much loot. Number 33. We all know that building a nether portal is not always an easy task. It involves a lot of material. But what if you could find a nether portal that was already built? You know, a half to ruined nether portal. Well, you can definitely do that now. That is definitely a game changing update because we've been building nether portals for years, but now you can find them. Number 34. One of the best updates ever, one of the biggest game changers ever introduced into Minecraft without a doubt is pistons. It is incredible the importance that one single block has had over the years because pistons are not simply blocks. They are mechanisms that can move and make a huge, huge part of bigger things. Pistons were introduced back around version 1.3 and were actually a result of absorbing the idea of a famous mod into the game. They changed everything, my dudes. I mean, they gave us amazing things such as automated doors, self-hiding places, self-opening doors, jumpers. So, I mean, think about how many things you can make with pistons or think about how many things you can't make with pistons. And those were 34 updates that changed Minecraft forever. If you guys think I missed any, let me know down in the comment section below. And don't forget to click that subscribe button because we are coming up on 10 million subscribers. But thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the great game of Minecraft.